Hey you guys, it's Nathan back with another video. Today we are looking at transparency in Photoscape X. So many times when you're working with a transparent image, it's confusing, doesn't make sense, layers, all that. We wanna cover it today to make it just simple for you guys. I had a question on a most recent video and we're gonna tackle that. Uh, his question was when you are in the editor and maybe you are starting with a blank template and you're adding something in, how do you make that background the same color? How do you work better with transparent images? So let's begin. In Photoscape X, when you go to the editor tab, you can either drag an image in or you can open just a canvas basically. You can hit new and then you're able to go in here and you can say, hey, I want a solid color for my background. I want a texture. I want some kind of a gradient or something, or I can just go with transparent. If you're working with a transparent image and you're working on a kind of a project, um, there's pros and cons to both sides. So uh, use what you think would be best. Um, it, in this case, I'm gonna go with a solid color just because I think it will be easier to showcase for you guys. So we're going to just pick maybe a lighter blue and we're going to do just a square 800 by 800 pixel template. So there you have it right there, uh, nothing too special. Now let's start to add in maybe a transparent image. So I'm gonna go over here to insert um, and then over here to image. And in here I have some uh, images that I have cut out, I've made transparent. So I will add those in, uh, we'll start with this one. So here's an image of me on my ripstick and I've added it to the image. Now, of course, there's always a question of like, oh, is the image bright enough, is it dark enough, things like that. There's ways you can get around some of that stuff, but just adding it in, there you go, you have it done. You could go and add in something else. I have this picture of an owl here, you can do that. And one thing to remember as far as with layers, we'll just cover this now, in layers, you even have a tab here that says layers and it will show you the stack. The highest is the front layer and the lowest is the back layer. So like for this, you have, let's say my hand here, back behind here is my face and back behind there is the wall. You don't see the wall that's directly behind my head because my face is blocking it and you don't see my face up in front of my hand because it's blocking it. In the same way, layers are just stacks. Uh, so in this case, the owl is at the higher, uh, the highest part of the stack. So it will be in front of everything else. So I can put it right in front of me. And in the reverse, if I were to move this, uh, move myself and move it to the top of the stack, then I am in front of the owl. And over here, you can do this where you can say, oh, send backwards, oh, send forwards and things like that. So that is just simply looking at the layers and when you're adding a lot of text and a lot of different objects and things into a project, it can get complicated, but uh, just understanding layers is very important. You can merge the layers if you're all done and you don't wanna make any more movements or things, but always remember when you're working with these type of projects to go into more and click save project. And that's where you can save the project out where you're able to go back in later and edit the image um, being able to edit the image with still being able to move around all the different elements and the different layers in here. Now, with that being said, he, um, in the comment, uh, he was mentioning, hey, I want to be able to change the color of the background to maybe a color that is in the image. So saying, hey, if you have this here, you know, maybe I want a similar color to be that background. So. If you zoom in, oh yeah, there's some neat colors in this owl, all right? So let's say the kind of the yellow uh, in the eyes, say that was the color you were looking for. The way that I would make the background that color or a gradient of that color would be simply to go over here to the tools tab, going down to, and there's a few different ones. There's uh, paint bucket, which might actually be the most helpful for us today. But there's also the draw, the scatter, there's different tools here. We'll go to paint, uh, the paint bucket and basically you're able to go down here to color and you're able to select the color. And Photoscape X with their color picker tool, it's really helpful to go over here to the color picker. You're able to just click on this and you're able to click on anything you want. So you, you could pick something from the interface or wherever, but we could look in here 
and you can see what color. It's nice because they do show the color uh, down below so you can kind of get a better representation of what you're selecting. But you're able to select that color. You're able to go into there, see what it looks like and say, oh, maybe I want it a little brighter or darker or something. But you're able to adjust it to what you want it to be. And then for this paint bucket, the way that it works is it's going to just simply paint it right on. And there's a tolerance slider if it accidentally paints too much into the image that you're wanting to preserve. You can slide that uh, more or less. But I can click on this and I can make that background uh, that color. Um, so that's really cool. And the neat, the neat thing here is that because it's still uh, going back over to the insert, like if you're in the tool tabs, you can't really move around your uh, layer, but you have to go back to insert. And when you're in insert, you can go back and you can put this uh, wherever you want. So that gives you the ability to make whatever you want that background to be, whatever color you want it to be. I was thinking about this and say, okay, well, maybe the paintbrush tool in certain cases wouldn't be the best, but what you could still do is you can go to the draw tool and you could draw in that background as well um, to be whatever you'd want it to be. And it's nice to think about this if you're ever like working on a project and you want to add a little bit of a flare or something like that. You can definitely do that. I also love the scatter tool as well where I can scatter um, different dots or colors and things. You can change the color you want. You can change um, a lot of different things in here. But I think it's really fun to be able to uh, make some of these different just artistic pieces and things. So... Um, as far as adding that color in, that's how I would personally do it. Um, now, one thing to note here is let's say you are opening up new and you hit transparent. Now, this is kind of confusing. If you do open up a transparent one and it looks like super weird, what you do is go down here to the bottom left hand side and it says grid. Grid is going to be really helpful for you because it will give you these teal lines so you can see at least what is that transparent section. Now, I haven't messed around too much with this because uh, it's kind of a meta thing. You wouldn't really do this just in a normal sit down session. But let's say you have that color there that you pick. You could, well, let's see, I don't know how it's going to add it like super well. Let's go to draw. Let's go to draw. Let's just select the color. Oh, I guess I didn't hit OK. OK, fine, fine, fine. All right, go over here to OK, and you can go and start painting in here. But what's neat is that you're literally painting on a blank transparent canvas, which means if I were to export this, you would just see this yellow or orange uh, just splotch on the you know left-hand side of the image. And you're like, OK, it's kind of interesting. Um, but the thing is, you can do this, especially for any kind of graphic design stuff. If you're just trying to make a little element to a project, you can definitely do this. Uh, and then you can go to insert, you can insert your image and stuff like that. So if there was some time when you were trying to work on a project but you wanted to start with transparency, you could totally do that. And you can still paint stuff in, you can still add in different things and all that. Now, one thing that I do want to note to you guys, which is super fun, is here's a project that I just did recently that did a lot with transparency and uh, what I had done was I compiled like four different images together to make this image here. And what I did, and it was quite the process, uh, but basically what I did was I first took an image where there were no, and I could just turn off all these layers, which is super fun. I can untick all of these different layers. And you can see kind of the original image. Now this isn't completely the original. I can click the original button to compare it to. So it started out like this, um, which looks pretty neat. And then it went to this. What I did was I blurred out the background by using the blur tool. I uh, straightened it uh, just in the quick menu. Uh, went over here to straighten and straightened it out. And it looks pretty nice. I could have done maybe a perspective shift to maybe uh, make things even more, you know, straight line and on point and things. But then what I did, which was really fun, uh, I was able to go and add in those different layers. And that was really neat. So what I did was, because I had my camera on a tripod and I had taken several pictures, I took one where I was 
um, where I was right here. I did another when I was over here. And I did another when I was right in here. And what was really fun was that I was able to slightly move and shift them just a little bit to pay on if I wanted me to be a bit more in the center or things like that. And there's obviously different ways to make this look more natural or more, uh, uh, maybe a little bit more simple. It's kind of tough when you put three exact copies of yourself for it not to just automatically look a little photoshopped, but um, I thought it looked out, looked really neat. One thing that was fun was I was able to take that transparent image of myself and one of the layers, I put it to a blend mode for darken and I turned down the opacity, I made it into a shadow of myself. And that was kind of cool to put a little shadow on the ground there. Also, if you are putting an image in, like take a look at this, you guys. Um, if you are seeing this here, and I will turn up the opacity so you can, hmm, I'll just change it to be like something crazy so you guys can like really see what's going on. But basically, I had myself and I was looking at like, my face is kind of dark, I can't really see my jacket, like the detail of my jacket and things. So I thought, what could I do to make this better? So what I did was I put enough, I duplicated, I hit the duplicate button, I put another copy of me right in front. And you can do different things in here. So like in this case, um, I don't want it filled, I want it to be myself, and I slid it right in front of me and you were able to slide between normal to darken, multiply, color burn, and like there's some different ones in here, but there were some that I thought looked actually pretty good, and some are kind of crazy, but screen actually worked out pretty nicely for me, and I just changed it around the opacity, and you can make some slight adjustments to the brightness and things. So I think that's really helpful because so many times when you put a transparent image in, you don't have much control over that image. You would have had to go back to the original and edit it, where in this case, you can still add a little bit of adjustments, which I think is helpful when you're doing a project like this. But nonetheless, you guys, this has been uh, just Photoscape X working with transparency, and I hope this was helpful. I hope it answered a lot of your guys' questions, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.